Welcome back everyone. Uh, as you can probably guess, we're still on Baja. We're camped out at Tecalote Beach, just south of La Paz. And we figured it's about time to do this uh, unboxing and review of our tire pressure monitoring system. It's gonna be the fastest review and unboxing we've ever done. So, unboxed. Uh, this product is amazing. Uh, the quality is very high. Having spent over 15 seconds with it already, I can uh, recommend this to all of our viewers. You should click on the link in the description uh, where we will be paid for your affiliate clicks and uh, order one up. Okay, in all seriousness, uh, this was given to us for free by one of our subscribers. Uh, he drives a big semi truck and ordered it, but uh, then no longer needed it. Situation changed, so he had this thing sitting on the shelf and offered it to us, which was very nice of him. Uh, this particular model, as I've said already, is uh, meant for an 18-wheeler. So it does have some accessories we're not going to use, like this remote antenna mount cable, coax cable and a remote mount antenna. We probably won't need this as our vehicle is technically about the same size as a pickup truck. And we have, I don't know, probably 18 of these uh, tire pressure monitors. Uh, so we'll have lots of spares and oh, there was also this uh, visor clip that I've already installed so that's everything that's included with the kit let's set up another camera here and get this oh here's one other thing I wanted to mention uh, I pulled the uh, power cord out for uh, hard wiring this thing in permanently and to my surprise there's a typical USB connector but it's hardwired to 12 volts so if you were to ever plug that into anything your phone for example uh, or a camera any any old standard thing that still has a usb connector that's expecting five volts here's what you can expect all right so why would you want a tire pressure monitoring system most modern cars, every car you buy off the lot these days, has a TPMS system built in, where there's a sensor inside the valve stem in the wheel that always sends the tire pressure to the, uh, to the car's computer or the on-screen navigation system or even just a dummy light on your dash. And uh, those work great. Our vehicle chassis is old enough. It doesn't have that uh, built in. It's not an option. And so we have to use an aftermarket solution like this. Now, in my research, I uh, came across Gary Westcott's choice on his Turtle 5, uh, and that was uh, made by Smart Tire, and it straps right onto the uh, ID of the rim inside your tire, and then it's, uh, you know, not in the way, not gonna get knocked off by debris, road debris, if you're crawling through rocks or, or whatever. And uh, I really wanted that, but they're really hard to come by. Uh, it seems they only deal with fleets and I couldn't get one. And then uh, we had a subscriber who offered us this system. It's made by Pressure Pro. Uh, they make ones for just small consumer vehicles, a pickup truck and travel trailer, that sort of thing. But uh, this one is actually intended for a big 18 wheeler. And I think they even have 36 wheel options. Uh, so they're used in big, big trucks too. And this one uh, is nice because uh, these sensors can go up to 299 pounds of air pressure. And lots of the little cheapo ones I saw on Amazon and eBay, the little chintzy ones with a solar panel and they Velcro to your dash, uh, pretty much the same idea where you have a screw on bulbous cap like this and then a separate little sensor uh, receiver unit. Uh, the problem with those was they only go up to like 30 PSI, which or 30 or 40, which isn't enough for our tires. So. That's really great. I'm really appreciative to our number one super fan. You know who you are. Thank you very much. Okay, so this uh, system is it's quite cool. There's lots of features I haven't even touched on uh, in this video, trying to keep it brief. Uh, one thing I really like is when you remove the cap sensor off the valve stem and keep it off for 30 seconds and then put it back on, that sets the new baseline or the new target pressure. And that's going to work very well for us because if I take off one of these stems and deflate a tire uh, to go on sand or you know if we're doing a long distance of rough rough road where I've deflated the tire pressure and then when I put the cap back on it learns that new pressure as its uh, target pressure 
which is going to be really great because if we're super low pressure and heaven forbid we pop a bead or something uh, it'll monitor that new lower pressure and if there's a problem at that new lower pressure I don't need to go through and change a bunch of settings on the controller or do anything funny you just take the cap off while you're filling it up it resets after 30 seconds and then you put the uh, the cap back on and that learns its new uh, setting so that's one feature I really like about this all right so I read through the instructions briefly. Uh, it says to temporarily mount this where you intend to have it installed so that if there's any problems with radio uh, transmission from the sending units or transmitters up to the receiver that you'll be able to tell before it's permanently wired in place. So uh, as I said, I've already in installed the uh, visor clip and put a temporary uh, power connector on the end of the 12 volt USB cable so that I can temporarily plug it in and uh, get it set up here. So, uh, secondly, we're going to make this extra production value multi-cam. So we'll have a second camera pointing at the visor here so you guys can see uh, the, uh, the prompts and just how this goes. Okay, so powering up the uh, receiver now. E99 means something probably, and then no sensor. And that means no sensors have been programmed into this, uh, into the receiver. So press and hold the program button for five seconds. Three, four, five. And now if we can see this in the shot. The front driver's side tire uh, is lit, which indicates it's expecting one of these sensors to be screwed onto the valve stem of the tire. And then it will uh, program and associate that serial number to that position. More on that later. But uh, in brief, screw this on here. And hopefully you guys could hear that. The manual says to try and observe a puff of air sound uh, when you connect, when you spin it on, so that it, uh, that, that way you know it's engaged the valve stem and has, is measuring the air said differently. If the cap, when you thread on the sensor, it doesn't touch the stem, the needle on the stem, then uh, it won't be letting air out of the tire and thus you can't sense the pressure. All right, 46 PSI, uh, that's the uh, pressure on that tire, which is approximately what I have them set to. I should take this moment to uh, point out the instructions say to have your tire pressures all set to what you would what they should be uh, because every time you thread the the sensor on it sets the baseline or the the target pressure that you want to maintain so I've set it to 45 it's registering 46 good enough for now okay so this uh, unit has a ton of extra tires obviously uh, where uh, in positions we don't have so I've skipped through to the driver's side rear and I have another sensor unit here. Hopefully you guys can hear this. I'll get a little closer so you can hear that hissing. That's, that way you know that the pin in the center has engaged the stem uh, in your valve core, pushing it in and, uh, and that is uh, getting a solid pressure reading now. So we go up here. It says it should take about 60 seconds through the magic of editing and television, 60 PSI, which is correct for our rear tires, which carry more weight. Now to lock that uh, unit on that position, press and hold probe for two seconds. Now you can see here, this uh, dually outside wheel is flashing. We don't have this. So then we just go to the next, the next, 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 next. Pokey Dino, there's a lot of tires on this rig. And all the way back now. Okay, so now passenger side rear, it's expecting a tire. Let's run over there. Wind noise. Sorry about the wind today, everyone. These are uh, first world beach going problems, I guess. Okay. Spin this one on here. Put that good and tight. 
and run back up to the sensor display unit. And now as you can see here, it's uh, showing the, the pressure. Slightly low on that side, 57. Uh, that could be because this other side is in the sun, or it could be it's actually out by that much. 58 it's reading now. Close enough for now. I'll check on it again uh, once I've got this more permanently installed. So press and hold program for two seconds. Now it moves to the next tire position, which we don't have. Hopefully that's uh, getting picked up on that camera there. Whoops. Okay, and lastly, front passenger side. Oh, it says uh, in the manual not to use any tools except the uh, Pressure Pro provided tightening tool. But I don't have that, so we'll just crank this on here with this one. Well, my pack's never hurt anything. <sighs> okay, gluten tight. Come on, 47, a little bit high, but close enough for now. Okay, so that's that. Press and hold program to lock it in. And then it goes to some other position I don't have, which I'm not worried about. And done, press and hold set, I believe. And now it's done. You can see all four uh, positions are lit up and it's just sitting there happy as a clam. Okay, so pressing up here, I can cycle through my tire pressures. Front driver side is at 46. The uh, front passenger side is 48. The rear passenger side is 57. And the rear uh, driver side is 59. So, Interesting. I'm going to adjust those a little more carefully and see if I can get them dialed right in. Um, but basically that's a super simple install. Okay, so the next thing I want to test is uh, this unit is sitting here powered on, happy as a clam, I'm driving down the road, and what if the tire pressure suddenly tanks? So we can actually simulate that uh, because our tires can be mounted uh, backwards. That is to say, when they're mounted on the front, they're flipped inside out, and when they're mounted on the back, they're flipped this way. And so for convenience, our rims have valve stems on both sides of the rim. And so I've moved this sensor to the inside of the rim on the back side, where you can't see it, but trust me, it's there. And I've got our uh, tire deflator here. So I'll spin this on here. dumping and now we've come back up here uh, I'll splice in the view from the second camera but at some point here this should start screaming there we go 45 it doesn't like it all right so I whipped this up uh, some months ago and have been waiting for a good opportunity to show you so this is it I have a quick connect fitting to a pressure regulator, to a T, to two stingers with locking chucks. And this just plugs in right here at our bumper. Do you mind, dog? Up, up, up. So I have a uh, quick connect air fitting down here. You don't really need to see it. Just trust me that it exists. So that goes there. And that's, that's plumbed directly into our tank. So, uh, so I get like full flow right off the tank, just whatever the, the restriction of the hose gives us. So as you can see on the uh, monitor here, on the second camera, it's uh, slowly bringing the pressure back up. Probably have depleted the tank as far as uh, it's going to go, so now I need to run the compressor. So another really great thing about this uh, two hosed regulator setup is uh, I can have one clipped on each tire, obviously, and walk away, make some tea or whatever, 
and set the pressure to whatever I want them to and, and not have to worry about monitoring it sitting there pulling the trigger on the gun. So that's really nice. Uh, and then of course both tires are going to be the exact same pressure. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to our benefactor who sent us this, uh, this tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, they are not cheap and there's no way we would have bought that, that unit uh, on our own. So thank you for that. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.